Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I'm continuing my construction of a base on the moon. And I was hoping to use my dropship to deliver base modules, however that is still under development and not ready to go. And so we will try to deliver modules that would not fit in the dropship. And this is one of those, this is a solar array. Uh, so lots of solar panels would only work half the time on the moon because the moon doesn't get sunlight for the other half of the time. But yes, we have the largest solar arrays available and we have 10 of them on this truss. And we've got batteries, we've got a controller, reaction wheel, and we've got it all exposed and not in a fairing. So this might go horribly wrong, probably will go horribly wrong. I just want to see what of many possible things that could go wrong actually does. And then we'll put it into a fairing. But for now, we've got, we've got swivel boosters on the side of this. And then a mainsail at the bottom uh, with fins and all. And we have the thrust weight ratio and everything. But obviously there are downsides to this. And we'll see how it works. I have put struts. You can sort of see struts going from the payload down and struts from the boosters to the payload. And yeah, let's just take it outside and see what breaks. Okay, well, hmm. I wasn't entirely expecting that. Okay, so I've got a docking port at the bottom of the module. And maybe instead of a docking port, I'll use something else. <laughs> well, that, that could have been more violent. I wanted to put docking ports at either end to provide a control point, but maybe not. Let's. Oh, and the struts detached. Hmm. See, now that's not right. The root part is actually the controller on the rocket. That's for safety's sake. Um, Alright. We've got spark engines on the payload to provide thrust. Um, we'll just go with this. Let's see if that works. Um, maybe I'll have controllers on each of the boosters or something. Okay, well, those struts seemed fine. Uh, let's get the struts that were supposed to hold things together back on. Okay, let's try it out now. Okay, let me time warp till daylight. Why don't we release the clamps right when we ignite the engine just to save Delta V? Okay, and go! Once again, testing what is possible in this version of Kerbal Space Program 2. We've got fins. How much drag are we going to get though? We have a open end right there, I know. Well, we're not going badly so far. But the mainsail duration is probably not long enough. Well, it's a bit wobbly. I want to pre-ignite the swivels. This is an advanced technique. Totally cheating, but you know. Okay, 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 switch. Oh no, I can't leave active vessel. No, wait. Wanna, maybe I shouldn't make this the root part after all. That it's less wiggling if this uh, the controller on here is the root part. But I didn't know I couldn't leave this vessel. I guess it's because we're too low. Okay, different plan. I'll put an extra decoupler here. We'll dump the stage and then we'll dump the decoupler, uh, dump the control core. It's weird, but. Uh, it's mainly to maintain the balance of the payload. I don't want that controller uh, there, because otherwise I have to put something else on the other end to balance it out, and I don't want to do that. So we'll just have an extra decoupler to get rid of the control core at the right time. Uh, maybe that will do the trick. So let's make sure that we're going to be decoupling the right thing at the right time. And yeah, we'll pre-ignite the swivels. Maybe I'll put some more fuel on the mainsail stage too. Delta V wise, what it says here is 1,679 there and then 3,000 there. And of course, a payload has Delta V, but it's not showing it right now. That's enough to land, but not much more than that. So we want the swivels to get over to the moon 
and capture, and then the payload can land. I'm basically trying here to avoid the rocket we've been using with the Rhino and the boosters again. Anything but that. Oh no, it's bouncy though. Oh look, it's it's inside. Oh, I think the struts must have separated. The struts aren't there. Okay, where did the struts go? I don't even think they're appearing anymore. Okay, new struts. And incidentally, once again, we're trying to land on the baguettes. They are our landing legs. We have many crunchable baguettes. Okay, a little bit of a bounce there, but the struts seem to be working this time. And... Go. Trying for a normal trajectory this time, instead of a steeper one. We're past the speed of sound. Okay, hot staging the swivels. Until the stage at the bottom can take heat damage. Okay, staging. And we keep going. Not accelerating very much at the moment, but that's why I hot staged them. We are accelerating now, though. <sighs> I used to run the Elegant Design Bureau and insist on putting my payloads and fairings in stock, even though, if, even during the days when that was completely unnecessary. That's how I got my start on YouTube. Everybody was making stuff like this without fairings, and I went, no, I'm gonna use fairings even though the aerodynamics totally doesn't require it. And now I'm doing what everybody else did all those years ago. <laughs> oh well. Okay, let me coast at this point. And done. Alright. On to the moon. Okay, we have our plot. We have the Delta V to get there and capture. As planned. Two, one, go. Alright, that's okay for me. We have our periapsis and we are heading over there. Well, base is gonna be in the dark. What is happening to our orbit there? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, base is in the dark. We could do with some more inclination than we've actually got right now. We'll try and hit it over on this side when it gets into light. So I'll raise the orbit on this side so that we lower the orbit on the opposite side. That's probably okay. Alright, going to periapsis to capture. Where does it think I'm exiting? I don't even know what it's trying to do here anymore. It's all confused. I mean, obviously we're exiting over there, so why doesn't it show one of these points over there? Bizarre. See, I mean, what, what are these little exit points doing and why are they moving when I'm in time warp? This is all over the place. Ridiculous. Okay, I'm just hoping it doesn't signify some other glitch or something. Oh, I forgot the little light strips on this. Okay, retro burn. I would like the boosters to hit the surface. But we only have 42 meters per second left. That's maybe on the next orbit we can land at it. No, they gotta remain in orbit. Shucks. Ooh, one of them went the wrong way. That's weird. Well, from here on, we need to control from this one. Oh, oh, stop. Oh, that seems the wrong way. We need to reverse that core. Just. Okay, that's what our four sparks look like right now. 
And we've got some extra default names to worry about. Probably we need to go a little bit further south, but we'll take that for now. And that'll give us an impact point. Oh, uh, let's make it a little bit more decisive. Okay, uh, an impact point for the probe core we're abandoning. So let's let loose with that. Okay. Oh, it just suddenly changed the map view on me. It does that sometimes. I, I don't know what altitude it is, but it always shocks me. It's really abrupt the way it does that. Yeah, even though it has a reaction wheel, it's not easy to maneuver this. I mean, we're certainly not going to put this thing in the middle of the base. Given it's fairly large once the solar rays are spread out. So we'll need to line it off to the side anyway. Seriously, dramatic drum beats. Let's see what modules decide to explode as we go near them. Gotta line it off to the side, but not that far off to the side. It'll probably still have an effect. It's still probably best to stay within a 500 meter range. I think there's adverse effects if things you switch to are more than 500 meters, like these default name 33 and 32 over here. When we switch to them, the base modules started jiggling about. So I think we want all of our base modules within a very tight range for safety's sake. I will deliberately place this off to one side though, like I said. Well, there's all of our default names. Really sort of wanted to get closer. But... This might not be a great time to do that. Well, we're sort of close to the lamppost. I guess that sort of makes sense. I wanted to be within 200 meters of everything, but... Not quite making that. Okay, we are down on the baguettes. SAS off. Okay, now of course I had to make sure that the solar panels would be high enough. I guess I can just use the button over there instead of doing all 10 manually. All right, let's see. So just enough clearance. Or if they're rotated this way. A little bit slow here. We do sense some lag in the area. I have no idea how many parts everything is right now. Not as close as I wanted it to be. We could deliver more of them. Well, the sun's over there, so they're angling like that. They're all properly spaced. Very tightly, but properly spaced. Okay, so we have it down. That was successful. Let me save. Okay, and having saved, I will try and jump to different vessels to see what happens. Okay, Valentina's still lucky. Did anything else pop up while we turn to this? It's not pure, so there's our solar arrays. The rover with Tim in it is still on its wheels. This base module's okay. This one's okay. Well, it's on its side, though. This one also ended up on its side somehow. These two are fine. These two are ideal. This is how you should make your base modules, I think, but we'll we'll hold off on that determination. The wheeled one especially. Yeah, we'll have to double check that. Amazingly, the lamppost is still steady. It, it made a little bit of a tweak there, but it's okay. And then back to the solar panels. Okay, so yeah, that is our base right now. I think we can launch something else to it.
So, in looking for a base module that the dropship could not possibly deliver because it'd be too big for the dropship's bay, I inevitably stumbled upon the 1-2x part that exists in the game. It's named to be determined. And really, no base or ship is really complete without one of these. So we are going to send it over. It is a hydrogen tank, and therefore we should use nuclear engines with it. And that is what I've done here. Though, of course, they don't get much thrust to weight ratio. We need to make sure that we have a sufficient boost stage. In this case, the Mammoth. It doesn't have that much Delta V with them. Uh, so, actually, this is the wrong way around. Maybe it's got more Delta V than I think. Oh, no, it's got even less. Okay, uh, I don't know why the Delta V was reading like that. It confused me for a sec. Obviously, this is the Delta V for the Mammoth engine, and 10,000 was for the nuclear engines, but we had the nuclear engines at the bottom. It's weird. Anyway, so 2,000 meters per second, so it'll give it a boost, but then the nerves are going to have to do the rest of it. Right now, we're configured to land directly on the nerves. I'm sure uh, people will have comments about that, but... Uh, yeah, though they have an impact tolerance of 10 meters per second, just like the baguettes. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I certainly trust basically everything but the landing legs. Uh, so we have a, re a medium reaction wheel down here, and another one up there. And I've closed the node on the top in the hope that that will reduce the drag. But anyway, you look at this, it, it's gonna get drag. Even if you put a flaring around it, it's gonna get drag. I don't know if the antenna gets more drag or not. I I mean, it's not got a top node, but we'll find out how it goes. So, well, we had luck with the previous one, so let's try this ridiculous thing. Okay, oh, we should really clear up some launch pads. They've all got the launch clamps on, I think. Well, there it is. It's looking pretty good. It's like one of those sci-fi spaceships from the 1950s kind of things. I intended it that way. Okay, I think this is my first time launching from pad 4. Okay, well, let's see what happens. And go Mammoth! That is formidable acceleration. <laughs> I might have overdone the acceleration a bit. We might actually want to throttle down. Let's hold prograde. Now well, we are through the clouds. I'm just gonna have it hold prograde. No funny business. We can sort of adjust our trajectory by throttling. Oh, it's tilting away from prograde. No, do I need to put fins on you? Well, maybe put fins on you. Okay, I'll control again. Come on, you've got a big old engine, you can do it. Oh, I wanted to light the nukes earlier. We're probably not gonna have enough thrust weight ratio. Okay. Off goes the big mammoth, and we are losing speed. We'll see how it goes. 10,000 meters per second doesn't do much for you if you can't use it quickly. So that's what it looks like, what we will be landing on the moon. Is it a good idea? We'll find out. It's going to have to deplete quite a lot of the fuel before it even has a thrust-to-weight ratio to land on the moon. I mean, it could possibly do it right now, but... It'd be too tight. Well, we are accelerating now. Our time to wap waps this is still going down, though. This is going to be rough. The controller for this, by the way, is down here. 
There's a battery as well. Uh, the control is right there. Then the reaction wheel and the battery. Okay, we are now going to be going down. We're going down, but then it says time to apoapsis is increasing. I hate that. It should give a large number at that point. Because it's not in front of us, it's behind us. It's now T plus that number. If it changed to T plus, maybe, that's okay. That's definitely not T minus that number. That's just wrong. That is not the apoapsis. Apoapsis is like T minus a whole orbit or however you want to calculate. But T plus would be better. Anything but what they've got there right now. Maybe we should just underfuel it, but I felt bad about underfueling this thing. I felt like we should carry its full weight. Obviously, we don't need all that delta V. Also, the vertical speed indicator remains completely useless. We're now pointing straight up here. Now, the apoapsis is still going down, so that's what's important. Now we're going up. Okay, well, we can point more prograde again. Okay, it looks like we'll survive. We worked off uh, some of the fuel. Okay, we have made orbit and shut down. With 7,700 meters per second to spare. Like we needed that, but anyway, it's fine, it's fine. It'll make it harder to land on the moon a bit, but it'll be alright for now. I guess default name... default name 42 can't be bad, right? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, we could probably keep burning. Oh good, it's not telling me a lie about how much Delta V it's gonna cost. I was worried that was something it did with nuclear engines. After the previous dropship to Minmus attempt. Well, there's some inclination going on there. That's okay, we'll take that for now. The Reaction wheels seem to be maneuvering it fine for now. Hopefully it'll be good enough on landing. Okay. And... go. Well, nice that these nuclear engines don't have a spool up time. Okay, trying to do this exactly as it's stated. On shutdown. And let's see what the result is. Oh, well, close enough, I suppose. I'll take that and we'll go over there and figure out things. We've got 6,900 meters per second after all. It's ridiculous amounts of Delta V. Our base is over here. Seems like a long wait like that. And we've got Delta V. So I'm just going to totally create a maneuver to go directly into the plane of our base. And we'll go straight in. This is no moon. That's a moon. I was tempted to use the mob propellant tanks with this. They're really big mob propellant tanks. They're actually heavier than the hydrogen tank that we have here. Uh, but the only mob propellant engines that we have are the puffs. So we could do with a really big mob propellant engine. But it would take quite a lot of puffs. Quite a lot of puffs to justify using those mob propellant tanks on this. Go. Let's see if it does the right thing. It always moves along. I mean, that's fine and all, because we are changing our orientation quite a lot, but when I do these kinds of burns, it never ends up where it ought to be. I'll do the burn as specified, and we'll see if it ends up right. Yeah, you know, it never manages to keep up with the node is the problem. You see that? Technically, it's the coordinate system that's changing, not our orientation. But it doesn't seem to realize that. We'd be better off if it just stayed where it was before. It's not... That, that maneuver node is not supposed to move like that. Okay, go to the maneuver node. And this time I'll have it hold that point. Instead of going all over the place. Okay, just hold that. 
ignore everything else that's happening. See, now it's right. If it just ignores where the maneuver node is going, it's okay. But if it tries to follow the maneuver node, it's all messed up. Okay, well, that's a good enough setup for me. Got those two boosters still hanging out around the moon. Okay, right around here I'll do another correction. Okay, that's probably good enough, but we should go straight into landing burn stuff. I mean, this thing is feeling pretty safe so far. It didn't explode on the pad the first time. It actually made it to orbit the first time. So, what's the catch? And that's what it looks like descending into our sea. Our Moonar Sea. Don't know what the official name of it is. Oi, if you were at the base, how much would you not want this thing descending upon you? Our nerves landing struts? That is the question. Okay, within five kilometers now. I'd like it over here, I think, if we can do that. That's our shadow over there. Wondering if there was some other module, but no, that's our shadow. Yes, briefly, the soul panels at the base are ineffective because this is actually eclipsing the sun. <laughs> yep, lack of stellar exposure. Well, something's causing that. Well, we can certainly try for a precision landing. Somewhere between the solar ray and everything else was what I was hoping for. Okay, quit drifting to the solar ray. Stop it. We would totally be damaging the solar rays now. Okay, final descent. Okay. Gingerly. I don't know where we're measuring from. Okay, cut. We're down. Well, there's still some surface velocity. So, SAS off. It's swabbly. But it's a good location. Good location for it. So now the whoops. Now the lamp post is not the tallest thing around here. It's sort of leaning to one side. I guess maybe the ground's uneven. Well, this has a high potential for being explodey <laughs> or causing problems. We'll find out. Let's see. Um, where's our vanity shot angle here? Okay. Well, I'm just going to save it right here. We're not going to go to each thing in turn for now. We'll just glory in our big sphere being landed on the surface. With plenty of Delta V to spare, by the way. It could go somewhere else. Maybe it's an escape ship, but you'd have to like strap the Kerbals to it. So with this saved, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.